Hi everybody, my name is Horia Peruzio. I'm a developer advocate at Miro, and today I want to show off the AI image generator demo. So let's go ahead and show this app in action first, and then we'll get into the details of how it was built. So here is my app. You can see that it's pinned inside the, the sidebar of Miro. And here I have my prompt, and this is what will be used to generate the image. So here I have Van Gogh inspired portrait of a dog. We'll hit the generate image button and within a few seconds uh, we'll get an AI generated image and this is using uh, OpenAI's Node.js library in the back end. Um, and here is this wonderful picture of the dog and now I can drag it into my mirror board. Um, as you can see it takes a couple seconds to process um, but then within a few seconds we have our awesome um, Van Gogh uh, portrait of a dog within our mirror board. So again, you can do uh, you know cat, or you can do whatever your imagination um, is telling you to do, and whatever is useful for your mirror board. Um, of course, you can use this um, AI image generator. And I think the beautiful thing about this demo is that you can kind of uh, plug and play your own uh, AI backend. So I've made it very simple uh, coding-wise, so that it's easy to plug and play different solutions, so that you can choose. Uh, not only OpenAI, but uh, maybe some other different custom models or things like that. So again, here's my cat. Um, I can drag it into my Miro board and uh, we should be able to uh, have our image here. So that was the demo. Now let's uh, dive in a little bit of the code. It's all open source within uh, Miro's open source app examples repo. So let's go ahead and check that out. Um, so this was added uh, yesterday. Um, and here it is, examples, AI image generator, here's the repo, uh, we have a quick app demo, which I just showed you so you don't need to see this, um, and then here's the table of contents, some of the included features such as draggable elements, uh, zooming, as you could see after we drag the image it kind of zooms into the image, so we're using a, a, a Mira Web SDK method there. Um, it's built with Next.js and the OpenAI node library, and of course you need an OpenAPI key to run this. And the nice thing about OpenAI is they give you $5 of free credits and that's around 500 API calls. So it should be uh, well more than enough to get started developing and seeing how useful it is for your organization. Um, and here are the steps to run locally and I'll, sh I'll show you how to configure this at the end. Um, but first I'll dive into the code. But uh, you can see how to configure the app, how to install it into your um, Miro developer team and how to run it. Um, and here's kind of the basic folder structure um, and we'll go into the API and kind of the main index file in just a moment here. Um, so this is where you can find the code and now let me do a little bit of a code walkthrough and then I'll show you how to um, actually configure the app and you know create a new app in Miro and all that stuff. So let's get into the code. So I have my um, uh, examples cloned here. All you have to do is go into GitHub and then clone the app examples repo and you should be able to get this AI image generator. Um, and it actually starts with just a very simple .env.sample file where you add in your open API key. And uh, let me show you how to get that. So if we go into uh, OpenAI, all we have to do is grab an account and then click on View API Keys, and then here's where you create your key, and then all you do is copy copy that and then paste it uh, into this sample and then name it .env. I'm not going to show you my .env because it create uh, because it contains my OpenAI key, uh, but that's what you have to do. So now um, let's actually get into the meat of the app. So here is the index file. Um, and it's pretty simple. It's only about 90 lines. And as you can see, there is just, um, we import the web SDK, the Miro web SDK into in our uh, document.jsx file. Um, and this is where we create the main root of our um, uh, web page. And then basically this is kind of creating our app and then also importing our style.css. Um, so let's go ahead and go back into the index file. This is kind of the main logic. Um, and what it's doing is it's using React and it's using useState um, and useEffect. And then it's using two components that I've built, a button component and a prompt input component. So those are the two things that you see in the app, um, just that prompt at the top and then the generate image button. And then here are a few 
a few things we're using to actually set the state. So uh, setting the image, setting the spinner or the loader, um, that's that thing that's uh, spinning in the background while the image is being generated. Um, and basically we, we use state true uh, when it's loading and then false uh, to turn it off. Um, and then here is our use effect. So this is basically just ensuring that once we uh, we're registering for this icon click event, once we click on our icon in the sidebar, um, we're gonna be able to pop up our side panel. So that is um, essentially, uh, if we click out of the app, this is the open click event. So just bringing up our panel. Um, there's the panel. And then here is our drag and drop listener. So basically, once we uh, have this drop event, then we go into this logic. And this is where, again, you can see our spinner uh, set loading true. That means it's gonna be spinning while this whole um, if statement is taking place. So if we have this HTML image element, then we call the mirror.board.create image function, and that's gonna take a target.source. So the source is just that uh, URL of the image which OpenAI is creating on the fly. Um, and then we use that zoom to method which I talked about earlier to actually zoom into the image. Um, and then the last thing we do is turn off the spinner or the loader, um, so we do set loading false. Um, that's pretty simple. This is actually just taking um, and setting the value of the prompt. So once someone types in the prompt, all we're doing is setting that new value um, so that's not too uh, too difficult there. And then the main logic is this handle button click. So that button click is the generate image button. So again, that is um, this button right here. And essentially we set the image to null. Basically when we click on the button, uh, there's no image there. And we also set loading to true. That means that the spinner is working. And here's kind of the main actual logic, which is fetching this specific route we're fetching API slash OpenAI in our backend and then grabbing the response that our backend sends to us and we're setting it into that response variable. And we're also um, passing in the prompt. So we're passing in as body, uh, we're passing in that prompt, which is just that input value that the user types in in the front end. So let me show you that here, that's this. Then go, that's exactly that input value. Um, Awesome, so once we get a response from the back end, uh, all we do is we uh, parse that. So we parse the uh, data that we get back and then we look for the image URL um, and then we set the image uh, to the image URL so that it's not null anymore. The image source is now the image URL. So now let's go ahead and look at the route itself. So the OpenAI route is within, uh, this is just kind of the next JS uh, convention it's under pages and then under API and then OpenAI. So this is our route. Um, and again, it's slash API slash OpenAI. And a very simple uh, code, it's about 29 lines. So not, not super complex. And what we're doing is we're importing the OpenAI Node.js library. So I can show you that here. Um, so here are the libraries and we're using this uh, this OpenAI library here. And of course you need to install it first. So here we're essentially creating a new instance of OpenAI and we're providing our API key so that it hooks up to our account. And now we have our actual um, request. So we get our prompt from the uh, front end. So if, again, when we post uh, our request or a prompt input from the front end, we send that to the back end. So we're grabbing it here, request.body.prompt, and that's that prompt. And we're using this uh, openai.images.generate function, that's part of that Node.js library, and we're passing in the prompt. And what we get back is this uh, response. So within the data, we get a URL, and that's that image URL that we're gonna pass to the front end. So here's our uh, response.status.200. That means everything went successfully. And we're saying success is true and we're passing in that image URL. And now we're using a catch, um, we're to catch any errors, we're gonna send a 400 and say the image could not be generated. So nothing too difficult there. So now we understand this kind of route. So the response again is that image URL um, and then we're setting the image URL here 
and then we set the spinner to false, and again, we catch any errors. And now the last part of the code is the HTML. Um, so here we're using our prompt input component. So here it is. Um, it's a type input. Um, and then this is some Mirotone libraries that I'll link in the description. But this means column start one and then column end 12. So that's essentially. So column start one essentially starts the column here and column end 12 uh, ends the column here. So if we go into Mirotone, we should see uh, an example of that. Um, so here it is. Um, yeah, so you can see CS1 to CS12, that is essentially going to take up the whole app panel. But if we do uh, 10, it's going to uh, do a little bit less. 6 should be around uh, half. There you go. So you can kind of play around with this uh, in the interactive playground here um, to test out the different layouts for your app. And this is just that app panel. Um, and this is super helpful to make your app in that same design style as all the other apps within Miro to keep a consistent user experience and to keep our users happy. So that was the uh, CS1, CS12, that's part of Miro Tone. And then that's the value. And then the on change is uh, basically whenever we type something in, we have that function to set the new, uh, new value of the input. The button is similar. We got CS1 to CS12, so it's the same length as the input and type button. Um, so nothing uh, super, super uh, difficult there. Here's the prompt input. Uh, and on change, we handle input change. And then here's the placeholder that you see in the UI. Um, and then again, the button click, we have an on click handler. We, and it's that button click function, which we saw that calls to the back end to use OpenAI. And then the last thing is we have the image container. And this is where the image goes, of course. And we want it to be the same width as the um, button and the prompt input, so to keep everything consistent. So that's why you, we use CS1 and CS12 there. So this is using some Boolean logic to check if the image is true. So if it's uh, not set to null, then we're going to create this um, image mirror draggable class and then pass in the source. Otherwise, we won't do that. And then same thing here. If uh, our loader is true, then we create this spinner. Um, otherwise, it won't be created, so you won't be able to see that spinner. So that's more or less it for the code walkthrough. And now let's go into the app configuration. For the app configuration, I've created a repo here, um, Horia test, and I've um, cloned the uh, app examples repo. And we're just going to take it step by step and configure the app. And we can see all of those instructions, of course, uh, within here. So let's do it. We've uh, done this part already. I don't, I don't want to show you the app. OpenAI key, um, but we've already done that part. So then let's go ahead and uh, check, do the next steps. So I'm going to go into my uh, folder. So for your test, app examples, examples, AI image generator, and then we run npm install. Um, I've also seen sometimes Husky um, not found, so you might have to install that package as well. Um, awesome. So we've uh, installed the independencies. Now we can do npm start. Great. So now let's go ahead and actually create a Miro app. So let's go to developers.miro.com. And then we're going to just create an app from scratch. So we'll create a new app. And I'll call it uh, AI Image Generator uh, YouTube. And then I'm just going to do expire token. And then the only thing we really have to do is actually to edit the manifest. And here it is. And we've actually given you this app manifest uh, file. And all you have to do is copy and paste it. And I'm just going to keep the name just so we know uh, we know this is a YouTube uh, specific app. We'll click Save. And then we'll go back. Um, so here, here is our AI image generator YouTube. And then as we see in our app examples, once we do this part, we have to install the app and get OAuth token. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So we're installing the app here on our dev team. And usually while we're testing, we want to, um, again, install on a dev team just to make sure we're not um, breaking anybody's workflow in our real production uh, Miro environment. So that looks good to me. Now let's go back into our developer team. And now if I refresh the page, now once I've refreshed the page, I should go into my more apps and then I'm gonna type in AI. And here's the one I demoed earlier and this is my new one. And I'm gonna say a dog playing tennis. Um, so now we've set up the app, it was very simple. All we have to do is add the environmental variable, uh, run npm install and npm, uh, npm install and npm start. And then we have to create an app within uh, developers.mirror.com and then add in the app manifest. So not too difficult. So thank you so much for watching. Again, the idea is that you can change that open AI route to be whatever uh, AI model you want. I try to make this as simple as possible. So again, you can add in a custom model, you can add in whatever microservice or service you want. Um, but I hope that this inspired you to develop something awesome within Miro, and I can't wait to see what you develop. And uh, please um, send any more suggestions in the comments for new videos. I would love to hear it um, because I, I really want to uh, make sure my videos are helping everyone as much as possible. Thanks so much, and I'll see you on the next video.